So, if you're one of those unlucky filmmakers that recently bought the Pocket 4K camera from Blackmagic, or maybe you bought it a long time ago but you're still waiting to get it, uh, and uh, you're wondering what the hell's going on, did I just hear a Blackmagic released a yet another camera? And should I get it? Is it worth canceling my, my order? Maybe upgrading to this one or buying this one along with your Pocket 4K? Or all that stuff, or maybe you're just in the market for a new camera. Uh, then definitely stay tuned as I show you kind of the good, the bad and the ugly uh, about this new camera but also I'm gonna kind of show it in comparison to the previous Pocket 4K camera from Blackmagic. So here's the new camera Blackmagic just released, this is the Pocket 6K. Uh, and it's very similar actually to the Packet 4K. And that's the, one of the reasons why I'm going to be comparing it side by side. So you guys can kind of see the difference and how they perform and all that stuff. Uh, what is the, the biggest difference? Well really there's uh, I guess two things. Bigger uh, image sensor. It's now a super 35 millimeter image sensor or more or less you know that size equivalent. And then the mount, the lens mount is now a proper Canon EF lens mount. For those of you who didn't know, the previous model, the Packet 4K, has a micro four thirds image sensor and lens mount. Now, otherwise, they're pretty much the same in terms of, I'm saying, in terms of the weight, the, the body design. Uh, I mean, in fact, I'm actually using all of my accessories, including this uh, small rig cage that I've been using with my Packet 4K. I just you know didn't, didn't bother buying another one for now I, I just put it straight on this camera and it works perfectly there is one slight difference and difference is uh, I don't know if you can see it here but basically the the le where the lens attaches the lens mount itself that portion does stick out a little bit more now otherwise these two cameras are the same so starting from the side you have all the same ports so you have your mini XLR uh, cable connection you have your uh, powered limo connection for 12 volt uh, you also have a full-size hdmi port you have your headphone jack and you have a mini microphone jack which is a three and a half millimeter uh, microphone jack port on the top you have your power button you have your function button so you can uh, assign different functions to it and then here on the grip you have your iso uh, shutter uh, and then white balance buttons you also have your recording button your photo button and then here you have this little dial for changing the settings. And, and then on the back again, it's the same thing. So you have your high frame rate button, um, you have your zoom button. And on this side you have your card slot. So you have your SD card slot and the CFast 2.0. Now aside from those two cards, you can actually record on a third type of medium, which is an external hard drive, uh, which you would connect using a Type-C uh, USB connection which is actually on this side. So what do I think of this camera? It's actually very, very similar to what I had to say when I was reviewing the, the previous Packet 4K. And that's because, again, they're very, very similar cameras. So I, I love its you know cinematic image quality. I love the fact that you can record RAW, you can record ProRes. Now I'll talk about that a little bit in a second because there are some things to be aware of. But really this camera, just like the Packet 4K, is a true cinema camera it's just in a smaller form factor and now with the other benefit of being able to record in an even higher resolution because not everybody actually wants or needs 6k and uh, not to mention that they fill up your cards a lot quicker but they also on the post-production side you're going to need a, a lot more of a beefier computer and also more hard drive storage to be able to deal and edit uh, these files. So who should be getting this camera considering that you know there's a lot of other cameras on the market but also the fact that there's these two very similar cameras to choose from. Uh, I think the person that is going to go for this is somebody who definitely just is not a fan or doesn't want to deal with the micro four thirds uh, image sensor or mount. So for example if you don't have any glass, any lenses for micro four thirds or you don't like the smaller image sensor, uh, which is going to make it a little bit more difficult to achieve shallower depth of field and that kind of stuff, then uh, again, this is a better option, uh, especially considering that probably the biggest range of lenses out there or selection of lenses you're going to have to choose from are the Canon EF uh, mount lenses. So whether you already own those lenses or maybe you're going to be you know, buying into it and building a new camera package, this is probably, again, 
a slightly better option over the Micro Four Thirds. Does that mean that a Packet 4K camera can't be used with Canon EF lenses? Well, obviously it can, because that's what I've been doing most of the time by using uh, one of these little things, which is a, a speed booster adapter. You can get a regular adapter, but with the speed booster, it effectively not only allows you to mount Canon EF glass, but you are also converting, you, you could say, the image sensor or kind of faking it so that it behaves sort of like a Super 35 or even a full frame uh, image sensor. And that's the, the cool thing about the Packet 4K is that with the added expense, obviously, of an adapter like this, even though it's still cheaper than the, the cost of the 6K camera, uh, you're, you can effectively convert this and you can have a camera now that is a Micro Four Thirds, uh, you know, and accepts Micro Four Thirds lenses, but you can also accept Canon EF lenses and you can accept uh, Sony lenses or Nikon lenses or pretty much any other lens out there because you'll find a lot of these adapters. Uh, and then also you can change your image sensor size by using different uh, focal reducing uh, adapters. And in fact, you can get one of these to mimic a full frame look on this camera. Whereas this camera is a super 35 millimeter camera for Canon EF glass, and that's pretty much it. You can get some adapters that will kind of allow you to put, for example, Nikon lenses on there, but it's, it's not the best solution. And that's because of the flange distance that basically limits this camera from being able to adapt a whole bunch of other lenses. But if you are going for that super 35 millimeter uh, image, then uh, you know what? This thing is an awesome, awesome camera. I just simply love the look of this camera. For example, the way it handles the dynamic range. It has a reported 13 stops of dynamic range, which personally I haven't checked on the chart, but I'll kind of just trust black magic with that. Uh, in the end, like I said, just the images speak for themselves. So the way it handles the highlights, it looks really good. It captures nice details in the shadows. I also love the colors coming out of this camera. Again, very easy to just get natural looking skin tones and just overall colors. Uh, but also colors that look cinematic. And again, if you watch my review of the Packet 4K, that's pretty much the same things that I said about this camera. And so, again, I'm kind of comparing this because they are such similar cameras. And to be honest, when I was kind of looking side-by-side -side tests of these two, I could not tell much of a difference in terms of the colors or dynamic range. Now, if you're kind of wondering, let's say, how do they perform in low light? Well, again, Packet 4K is a great low light camera. It's not the best out there, but it's, I think, one of the better ones. And especially, I would say it's the best cinema camera. What I mean by that is that a camera that records raw cinema image quality, uh, this one performs the best out of all the ones that I've tried in low light. And that includes the RED cameras, Arri Alexas, or the, the Ursa Minis. And guess what? The Pocket 6K is just as good, if not maybe actually slightly better when it comes to the low light performance. So at 400 ISO, you're not really gonna see much of a difference because as you can see, they both look pretty much the same. Now, when I jump to 3200 ISO, as you can see, both the 4K and the 6K cameras look almost the same. And that's something I'm gonna tell uh, for those of you guys who don't know anything about these cameras is that these cameras have dual native ISOs so you have one at 400 ISO, another one at 3200 ISO, meaning those two native ISOs will give you the biggest dynamic range, but also the cleanest looking images. Now, when you're jumping a little bit higher to 12,800, then this is how it looks on the Packet 4K. And again, this is how it looks on the Packet 6K camera. And if you go all the way max to 25,600, which personally I would not recommend ever shooting at that, but if for some strange reason you wanted to, uh, then this is how the Packet 4K looks. And there's definitely noise in there, but again, you're pushing the sensor to its max. And here's how the Packet 6K looks at 25,600. Now this one, the fact that it is 6K, I think because of the higher resolution means the pixels are a little bit smaller, which I think makes the, the noise a tiny bit less visible than on the 4K. Now, when it comes to the rolling shutter, again, they're both almost identical. Here is the 4K. This is how, how it looks when I'm kind of panning around. And here's the 6K. And here's both of them side by side. And again, as you'll notice, there is a rolling shutter there, but it's very minimal. Uh, and again, they're both pretty much identical looking. Now, I bet a lot of you guys are wondering how the sensor size kind of compares on both of these cameras. So I did actually shoot tests where I had the two cameras side by side and I would use the same lens first, 
Now in order for me to do that, I actually had to put a, a speed booster adapter onto the Packet 4K so that A, I could use the same lens, which was a Canon EF mount lens. And in this case, it was the Rokinon 50 millimeter at T1.5. And this is how it looks. This is on the Packet 6K. And here's the same shot now on the Packet 4K, again, using the same lens, but on the speed booster. And what you'll actually notice is with the speed booster, the Packet 4K actually gets a wider field of view. So it's, again, as if the image sensor was bigger. Well, it's not, but like I said, with the focal reducing adapter like this one, uh, that's kind of what essentially you're doing. You're kind of faking that, that bigger image sensor. Now, one interesting thing I found with the focal reducing adapter that I've been using, uh, it should essentially convert a micro four thirds image sensor to a super 35. But in fact, like I said, it makes it even slightly bigger. So why is that happening? Well, that's because the Packet 4K doesn't quite have a micro four thirds image sensor. It's actually a little bit bigger than that. Whereas the 6K is, I would say, a little bit smaller, even though there isn't definitely a standard for Super 35. It's kind of more or less a ballpark figure. It's kind of similar to APS-C size image sensors, but it is a little bit smaller than most APS-C size cameras. So meaning that the difference between these two sensors isn't actually as big as a standard Micro Four Thirds to Super 35. So when you actually throw in that uh, focal reducing adapter, it actually results in an, a slightly wider field of view. Now, when I actually throw in a native Micro Four Thirds lens onto the Packet 4K, that's when you can really see the, the difference in the image sensor. So here's how the shot looks on a 50 millimeter lens on the Micro Four Thirds on the Packet 4K. And here's how the same shot looks on the Packet 6K and again, a 50 millimeter lens. So there you're definitely gonna see that again, this camera gives you a wider field of view and it's gonna be because of that easier to get uh, shallower depth of field. And here I'm just gonna show you guys quickly a few other uh, quick tests that I did. Uh, I have one for example that I did uh, with the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter lens. Here's how it looks on the packet 6K. And here's the same lens on the packet uh, 4K with the speed booster. And this is zoomed out all the way to 18 millimeters. Now, just for comparison, I tried again the Packet 4K without the speed booster and with a native Micro Four Thirds lens that has a 18 millimeters. And again, this is how the Packet 6K camera looks with the 18 millimeter lens. Now, for those of you guys who want to see more of these camera tests that I did, uh, the full length and also on full resolution and all that stuff, then uh, you can go to my website at tomantosfilms.com. You can download also the f sample footage there. So again, you guys can compare the different shots and, and see for yourself just how well the Pocket 6K performs. So aside from the image quality, which like I said, I think this camera uh, performs amazingly in those terms. Uh, what are some of the other kind of cool things about this camera and maybe not so cool things? Well, one thing I like is the audio options. Like I said, it's a proper video camera, not like those DSLRs or DSLM type of cameras that are, uh, you know, don't have proper, a lot of them at least don't have proper audio monitoring or don't have even uh, phantom powered, for example, XLR plugs. This one has that. Now it is a micro XLR, so you do have to get a, a converter adapter or you can actually use this, which is what I've been using. Uh, it's a microphone from Asden, and I've actually used their other model, which is has a full full size basically XLR connection with uh, with my Ursa Mini Pro camera. But uh, for this camera, I actually got this one because this is like there's other model that they came up with, which has the Mini XLR plug, and this works perfectly. Put it here on your Hachu mount. Uh, well, if you have a cage, that is. And this microphone sounds really good. Here's a little sample so you can hear for yourself. This is the audio test on the Asden SGM250MX microphone plugged in through the mini XLR connection on the Pocket 6K camera. Now, as far as the cage, like I said, it's the exact same cage and pretty much most of the accessories I'm using that I've been using on the Pocket 4K. So you guys can check out my video that I have about my kind of a setup with the Pocket 4K. Uh, but I will be doing a slightly updated video of that simply because not all the accessories work that well with this camera. One thing I do have to tell you guys about this camera is about the battery. It is not as bad as some people are saying. It is, uh, is it bad? Well, yeah, it's bad. It's not great, I would say. It's pretty much this very similar to the, actually, to the Pocket 4K. When you're recording 6K resolution, like nonstop, 
you're pretty much when you're starting on a full battery and these are these small Canon LPE6 batteries uh, th this battery uh, is gonna basically give you full recording 6k resolution uh, it will run for around 46 minutes that's pretty much the average that I've been getting sometimes we'll jump up to like 49 minutes Sometimes we'll jump down to 45 minutes, again, depending on the battery that you're using. Now, another little interesting quirky thing I found about this camera is that when you're recording with image stabilized lenses, then when you're running the camera and you're powering it off of the battery or dummy battery, uh, then you the, basically the image stabilization will not actually be activated. It's not powered in, in your lenses until you hit record. But for example, here you'll notice I'm kind of shaking the camera on purpose and the camera is not recording and you can definitely see all the shakes there. And the second I hit record, boom, it's the, the image stabilization kicks in. Sometimes I even notice that like once you press record, it takes like a, a half a second, maybe even less than that for the IS to engage. And then that results in the beginning of your shot kind of having that little jitter there. As the, as the image stabilization in the lens kind of kicks in. But another interesting thing I found is that when you power this camera using the Limo here power connection, the 12 volt power connection on the side, whether you're plugged into an AC outlet or let's say to an external V-mount or Anton Bauer battery, uh, then in that case the lenses are constantly being powered, meaning the image stabilization in the lens is working the whole time whether you're recording or not. Also, another little thing I found is when you're recording to the Samsung T5 external SSDs, which these are great, they're cheap and affordable way of getting a lot of basically recording media. And it's what I love using with my Pocket 4K. Well, with the Pocket 6K, I've still been using it and that's pretty much all I've been recording on. Except uh, if you're gonna be recording in RAW 6K 3 to 1 compression ratio, then you might experience some dropped frames. It seems that at that data rate and that, that basic resolution, it, it cannot, this hard drive basically cannot keep up all the time. So sometimes you will get dropped frames and your camera might just stop recording for on you. Now the second you drop to five to one or you know, eight to one or 12 to one, then it's no problem recording on this, uh, this SSD in 6K, whether you're recording in 24 frames per second or all the way in the maximum, uh, 50 frames per second and that actually brings me to my next point which is the different uh, frame rates that you get on this camera so you can record in 6k full 16 by 9 up to 50 frames per second it's not 60 frames per second like when you're recording in uh, full resolution which is 4k on this camera now if you do want to record 60 frames per second then you can do that in 6k but only in the 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio meaning uh, it still uses the same width of the sensor, it just basically letterboxes the top and the bottom. It just doesn't use those uh, pixels there. And because of that, it can handle 60 frames per second. Uh, also, you can do that in uh, when you're recording at 5.7K, then it's recording at uh, the 16 by 9, but it is slightly windowed. You can actually also record in 120 frames per second, but that's going to be in 2.8K resolution, which is, again, a crop in on the sensor. So you're not getting the, the full field of view. Another recording option I actually have is 3.7K anamorphic, which is really cool. And I can't wait uh, for the Pocket 4K camera to also get that update. And in anamorphic 3.7K, you can record also slow motion up to 48 frames. Now, in all of the resolutions I just mentioned, another little interesting thing you'll find out is that you can only record in the Blackmagic RAW format. Now, maybe with a future firmware update, uh, Blackmagic will change it and you'll be able to actually record in those resolutions in Apple ProRes. But right now, in Apple ProRes, you can only record in 1080p, which is windowed, and you can do 120 frames per second, or in 4K, and then it's 60 frames per second, but it's not windowed. It's basically 16 by 9 4K uh, resolution it was actually going to be using the full 6K image sensor and then basically just downscales it afterwards, uh, you know, while it's processing. And anyways, I'm going to be doing more tests with this camera to kind of show you all the different the differences visually and all that stuff. Uh, but yes, you can record in 6K with this camera and you can also record 4K without cropping in on the sensor. But again, 4K is only ProRes, 6K is only Blackmagic RAW. So again, if you're looking for cinema quality, and you want the, you know, the Canon EF lens mount, go for this. 
if you don't care about that and or maybe you even have a preference for a smaller camera because again if you look at it you know this is pretty much the same kind of a lens range this is the sigma 18 to 35 this is the lumix vario 12 to 35 millimeter lens uh, but this is in a micro four thirds this is canon ef you can see the difference so definitely if you want to have the smallest form factor then i would still go with the packet 4k Yes, you're not getting that extra resolution, but maybe you don't care about that. But in this case, you're saving yourself on the size. Whereas here, the lenses are automatically going to be bigger. So that's kind of where the, I would say the two big differences are between these two cameras. So definitely, if you're in the market for a new camera and a camera that's going to give you cinema image quality, you're definitely going to find it in, I think, one of these two Blackmagic cameras. And by the way, I'm not being paid by Blackmagic. I bought both of these cameras with my own money. I actually overpaid for this one because it was so back ordered. And the only way for me to get this was to get it from another guy who was selling it on eBay. But he was charging over $2,000, which this camera retails brand new. Uh, for $1,300. So if you can actually pick this camera up now, there's a lot of stores that have you know filled up their back orders. So you can actually find it if you look around. Or if you go actually on eBay right now, you can find the Packet 4K right now on eBay for pretty much the same price. This one, I bought it as soon as I heard about it, bought it, and I'm like, I'm, you know, I basically thought I would try it out, do all these tests and see, okay, is it worth it for me to keep? If not, maybe I'll return this camera. But I, I think I'm leaning actually towards keeping this camera. It, it is, it's, it's very similar, but yet it's, it's just, it's different. It's the fact that it's, it is Canon EF and it's that slightly, you know, higher resolution. It's definitely going to be handy for me because I do a lot of special effects work or I do, do like to do a lot of reframing, even if my final project is only 1080p resolution. But anyways, hopefully this answers all your questions. Uh, if you have any other questions, though, do let me know in the comment section below. I will be checking uh, the comments. I will be replying. And also, I will be doing following up videos about the Packet 6K camera and some of the other things, functionalities and all that stuff. So, again, any other questions, leave it in the comment section below or even better because YouTube does filter a lot of comments automatically and they don't all show up. Just head on over to my website, tomantosfilms.com. Over there, you can subscribe to my newsletter so you're notified when I release new videos and posts. Uh, and also there you can contact me through my contact page with any questions you have. Anyways, my name is Tom Antos and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!